Hi, so today we're going to uh, begin what is part of the Patreon group experience, which is sharing the authoring process of the book, Eye of the Needle. And um, what this entails is largely going through some of the notes and the material that I'm working with as I assemble this. So uh, I'm off camera today. I'm going to share some screens with you. And the idea of this is basically to go through some of the concepts that are early formation of the book itself. Eye of the Needle is not going to be um, a standard book in the sense that this research or so-called fact-oriented per se. It's based on a lot of research that I've done throughout, uh, I'd say the last 30 years, really my entire life. And then uh, the last 10 years of doing the shows uh, Exotic and Off Planet Radio. And where this all culminates is in concepts that have to do with the advancement and evolution of consciousness. From my standpoint, the concept of consciousness is largely the totality of our awareness of ourselves as ourselves within the construct of a limited reality experience inside of this present reality. In other words, really what it is is we're part of something much larger. We're actually, in fact, what you would call the quanta of totality of consciousness which you know you could call that god you could call it creator or universe but the concept behind it is that we are very much a part of a total experience in a limited reality stream so as we go through this i'm going to share some of the screens here of what i'm calling the mind map and the mind map has to do with the concepts of what I am calling autonomous gods. So as we go through this, I'll step through it. These are concepts that I've worked with for a long time. The implementation of them goes into another area completely, which has to do with alchemy and shamanism breath work and advanced states of consciousness that sort of take us into what we consider to be altered states of consciousness. Really, they're not altered states, they are an expansion of the present state because the present state is a limited stream of reality. So we go through this, the first notes here we'll kind of break out some of the core concepts and then we'll go through this as we go along. Again, the book itself isn't intended to be linear in the sense that a normal book is. Um, more and more increasingly as I write, I'm realizing that we can't get away from visual media because of the fact that language constructs themselves are a limited expression of conscious experience. In other words, I've done broadcasting for most of my life. The spoken word, the written word have been sort of the lingua franca of expression of experience, but at the same time, it's very limited. So as we go through this, this is sort of a breakout, but it's not linear in the sense that uh, in any way am I prescribing this as a process? I want you to go through the thought process with me. And again, the concept is to share these ideas and for you, the viewer, the listeners, the people who participate in the levels on Patreon, this, these will go out to the levels above $5 a month as part of the Patreon program. What you're going to see is that I want to bounce ideas. I want to expand ideas. I want feedback. I want you to experience the concepts in a hands-on fashion. So the book itself
the book itself is not linear in the sense that it's chapters and subsections. It is the idea of building and expanding on some core concepts and then making them accessible in ways that go beyond normal linear concepts of books. How that works exactly, I have no idea at this point. Um, the best example is probably, if you're old enough to remember it, is the book called Be Here Now, which came out in the early 70s, written by uh, Richard Albert, who was an associate of Timothy Leary under the name Baba Ram Das. And if you remember that book, uh, the book was um, of its time based on the psychedelic experience and then bridging that into transcendental meditation and the experiences of Eastern mysticism. And in a lot of ways, what we're really dealing with is the bridge between the present concepts of science and technology and the more liminal concepts of metaphysics and where metaphysics takes us as a bridge concept to bring these abstracts into a concrete reality. In other words, the application. And the application comes as a result of us basically beginning to manifest using the energies that are coming in at this time. Um, if you follow the shows, you know that since 2019, I've been saying that we are in what I've called the eye of the needle. In other words, this is a point where a lot of convergence is occurring. Also, at the same time, a lot of shedding of karmic weight, uh, shedding of the material concepts that have limited us, and working with the energies that are coming in, as I outlined in Eye of the Needle number four, the cosmic forces that began to come in after the winter solstice of 2019 and going through January and February of last year. And obviously right now, as we are recording this, we are in this dark tunnel, which has been called COVID-19, coronavirus, pandemic, epidemic, plandemic, whatever. These are the dark forces working. This is the time, as I pointed out in Eye of the Needle number five, when they knew that these energies were coming in. Astrologically, this was all predictable. Astrologically, they are very aware of where we are in time and what is going on cosmically and inside of the Earth realm. And I'll, I'll just state here that what we understand as cosmos, what we understand as space, is again, not the linear concepts that you get via modern studies of so-called space as outer space, or the cosmos, as even Carl Sagan addressed it, or certainly not the concepts given to you by modern day astrophysics science, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, NASA branch, which has given you basically the idea of space as being somewhere out there when it's inside of the construct. And so a lot of that is, are things that are going to get broken out in the book. You know, one of the goals is to really distill down a lot of the concepts that have come out over the course of doing these shows and what I've come to understand, what I've seen, what I've experienced, and what I've come to learn about the construct of both this world system that we call Earth, Gaia, Terra, versus the cosmos aspect, inner Earth, outer Earth, and the vortex matrix construct, which is much closer to reality. So I entitled this particular presentation, Autonomous Gods. And when I first started writing this, and as you're gonna see here, this is a mind map. This is a handwritten, me working through concepts visually. The autonomous gods concept initially bothered me. I wasn't sure if I liked it or not because I wasn't sure 
if it was accurate in terms of being able to encapsulate the ideas that I was trying to bring forth. So the concept of the autonomous gods is sort of a foreign concept because you would think, well, gods would be autonomous. But we're talking about human creation here. We're talking about human beings living in a limited consciousness awareness and coming into a time when we're, be, we're just in the gleaning right now of these concepts. What is the autonomous gods? How do they function? What is this? How does it work? And again, it's not linear. So some of the concepts I'm going to break out are nonlinear, but we have to approach them in a linear fashion in order to get them into our working awareness and then be able to go forward. So when I talk about autonomous gods, I'm talking about what we experience in limited consciousness and how we are expanding towards this concept of the kingdom of God within you. You know, the motto from the show, for the show from day one was the truth is out there, it's inside you, meaning the truth is inside you, out there is inside of you. You encapsulate inner space, outer space. Autonomous Gods begins by addressing who we are, what we are, in terms of fractals of source. And understanding that a fractal is complete. It's fully invested with all the nature and characteristics of the original creator, aka a universe or God. And when we begin to look at this, we begin to see the bridge here in terms of how it functions. Universe God, the overarching creational aspect, works through the quantum structures, the expression of fractals as individuated consciousness, which streams out from source, from universe, from God, however you want to look at that, these streams of consciousness basically emanating out as rays. And here we just note where you see these HS, that's what I'm referring to as oversoul or higher self. These are the fully invested branches of consciousness that contain full awareness of our entire incar incarnational experiences throughout time space. In other words, from the time that you began to incarnate, you accumulated experiences that are stored in what we call the Akashic record, the Akash, the records, the memories of everything you've been, are, and will be, because past, present, and future really are the same time continuum. I know this gets dense. Stick with me here. Time itself is simply, again, a segregation of a continuum into units that we can understand in limited consciousness. The limited consciousness is what emanates off of higher self into expressions of individuated consciousness streaming down into time. So that each individual expression itself is imbued with the fullness of what we call God, creator, universe, all that is. We are constantly expressing that in an individuated form, and we are constantly expressing that form in new and unique ways as we begin to go through the various incarnational cycles. So as we go through the incarnational cycles, we begin to get into the individuation process and we begin to understand who we are from a larger stretch of the construct. So you have and you are an oversoul, a higher self, however you want to express that. It is, again, the completeness, the totality of who you are. It's the sole record of your life, times, experiences, going back 
through many lifetimes, many hundreds, in some cases thousands, of incarnational experiences. All souls are not the same, same age. All souls are not in the same incarnational cycle, nor were all souls of this world originally. This kind of goes into the starseed concept to some degree because the starseed concept takes us into a place where we begin to understand that, that there are worlds outside of Earth and that souls themselves are not specific to a world, although some beings are native souls to a particular world or a particular cosmic realm. So what we understand about how we incarnate is we may or may not have incarnated into this world as a native soul of this world. The starseed concept, although it's really overblown, and there's a lot of pride and a lot of um, false egoic hooks into that is true in terms of the fact that to some degree, many of us came here as incarnated souls to be on this world, to bring with us aspects of previous cycles which were in other worlds. Earth itself, was formed over very long periods of time, as you understand time. Although in the grand expression of universe creator, God, everything occurs at once. But for our purposes in the materium of 3D space time, everything in creation is long cycles because of our consciousness and the way we work through processes. So you have, you are a higher self. You are an expression of the oversoul. You are an expression of creator. The oversoul, hence you, your soul, your spirit, your awareness, your consciousness of who you are is an individuated expression of a larger expression, which is the oversoul or higher self, which is in itself a complete quanta a complete unit fully encompassing everything that is creator within that soul expression of the oversoul higher self. The completeness of the original you that is not inside of this focus simulation of the 3D consciousness manifesting itself in the limited focus of awareness inside of a linear construct of cause and effect. That's wordy. That's very wordy. And it's very difficult to say things sometimes in a way that is simple when you're dealing with that level of expression. So let me go through this again. You have, you are a higher self, an oversoul. You are the completeness of the original you that is not inside the focus simulation of the 3D consciousness, which we are manifesting. It itself, this present reality, your consciousness of this present reality is in fact a limited focus of awareness. It is a segment, a slice of awareness inside of a linear construct of cause and effect. And technically, when you consider this, I keep losing my graphic here when you consider this you have to understand that this limited expression of consciousness is itself sort of a tripwire The oversoul contains everything inside of it that is from the beginning of your first origin, your first beginning. It is a fractal expression of the creator. It is also connected to creator in a continuity. 
But I want to come back to this for a minute, this concept of cause and effect. In fact, the linear aspect of cause and effect says that we are the causative aspect and the effect is what manifests. And that has largely been the understanding of how we create in a 3D, 4D space-time continuum. In fact, effect comes first, and effect moves cause via physical movement and movement of consciousness via the various mechanisms of energy within the universe as a result of effect. In other words, the effect pre-exists because the effect is an outworking of imagination, dreaming, and positive assertion of desire. Let's put it that way. So cause and effect is really an inversion. It's effect, then cause. The oversoul higher self, fractal of the original creator, connected to the creator in a continuum, expressing downward into individuated consciousness. This occurs, and again, none of this is literal. This is just a way of understanding a concept, expressing itself via waves and operating in full awareness outside of space-time. In other words, higher self operates outside of space-time. Higher self, the oversoul, is an individuated expression of all that is. It creates by diverse expressions of itself using modeling software running in the causal and etheric planes. So this goes into the study of the seven planes, the seven rays, the seven emanations. Why seven is a divine number. It is the causative base set that leads to the completion which is the eighth or the infinity. So when we talk about going through the levels, again, the linearity isn't the issue. One through seven create, well, eight is a completion cycle or the infinity. The way it creates, it begins with the consciousness waves moving down into the material plane from the causal and etheric planes. The etheric plane attaching closely to the body, the causal plane being that outward force that moves the imaginative energies into the creational realms of energy. And so energy themselves begins to express in light, frequency, electromagnetism. Hopefully we get these diagrams to line up as we go through this because it gets more complex. So as we begin to move through the energetics of consciousness, we move through the etheric field and we begin to move into individuated consciousness, which organizes matter from the ether of space or what we would call the prima materia. Ether itself is simply a field comprised of different bands of energetics, light, electromagnetism, breath, chi, which in turn begin to create what we call time. I've said this many, many instances over the years that while time is real in terms of how we perceive it 
it's very elastic in terms of how it actually operates. We don't understand it. We basically, as human beings, are generating time in time domain fields. Is time real? Time's as real as it needs to be to operate through the energetics of organizing matter from the ether. Because again, in our terms of how we operate in limited consciousness, we run very long creation cycles. At least traditionally we have. In this new energy coming forward, however, a lot of this will speed up. But for the purposes of expression, we are using the code of the modeling software, which is called time and 4D. Fourth dimension is the time domain inside of the three-dimensional space, hence you have space-time. So time is as real as is required by the consciousness to be able to work through the energies inside of the time domain to begin to generate what we call probable futures. And the probable futures are largely a stair-step process. They're linear sequences in four dimensions unified in a fifth dimension master clock database. Um, step with me here as we go through this. Largely the dimensions we represent as a vertical ladder and then horizontal time bands that we move through. All of these are linear visualizations of something that really is nonlinear. This is simply the way we compartmentalize because we operate inside of time. So the time bands themselves, or what we might even call time horizons, operate in a sequence, but they really operate through the one through seven modes coming to the eighth, which is infinity. And infinity is all probabilities operating in one time band, all of them having kinetic potential, the limitless expressions which are themselves finite. Each probable time band is limited by the energy, attention, etc., how much you invest in it, in terms of conscious energy. Now, Anybody that has gone through goal setting, anybody who has gone through manifestation in terms of being able to bring forward into the physical things that are seen in the imagination, understand this concept of the kinetic potential. That limitless expressions are themselves finite in how they operate. Again, they are finite based on the latter stair-step methods that emanate from unlimited probable futures. All time is now, but all time cannot manifest into a single linear time wave. So some of these will operate vertically but at some point they shoot off horizontally. And the horizontal time bands are where you begin to do creation or what we would call the kinetic potential. Each probable time band is limited by the energy and the tension that is invested in them. We know this. We know that we have limited ability to imagine, to dream, to plan but that it is the strongest energy invested in terms of attention, in terms of investing emotional energy that yields the greatest result. Thus, while all probable futures do occur, some become fully realized and reach a critical mass of a point we would call intelligence 
Others simply terminate because they fail to manifest. In other words, energy and attention are how we propel intelligence from the zero point to bring forward from the probable future time bands that which will become manifested. So some will reach a critical mass of zero point, realization, manifestation. Others will terminate due to entropic forces. If you've tracked this far, you understand there's a lot of data missing in this field. As I'm going through this, this is a rough outline because we're, we're missing certain things right now. But it's a rough outline in terms of trying to map, mind map, the creational process and our place in it. So as I'm looking at this, I'm looking at it from the standpoint of what is called the ontological view, the grand sweep of this, which comes from creator source down through the expressions of quanta selves, quantum selves, higher selves, oversouls and the oversouls then emanating the individuated consciousness which goes into time space to begin working through the energies in the etheric fields using light ma electromagnetism magnetics energy breath work chi but focus through time and then emanating out into probable futures, which then go into a manifestation process. So let's move the screen over here and pull up the next screen and see if we can get through the rest of this. So here we go. Again, infinity equals all probabilities operating in one time, land, time band. We have kinetic potential, limitless expression. We move down through the process, understanding that the process itself will shed some aspects of manifestation in favor of others which are more strongly energized by our creative impulses. In other words, that which you most strongly visualize will be those which reach point zero being intelligence, intelligence being energy and attention. That's a short definition of intelligence, while others which lack the energy, focus, attention, inspiration, guidance, terminate due to entropic forces. The entropic forces are basically those that run out of energy. So in the creation process, we are going through that which is most viable. This is actually sort of what... Um, uh, creational Darwinism in some respect, it's survival of the fittest or survival of that which has the most energy invested in it. We define intelligence for the purposes of this as the ability to generate energy integrated to new original conceptions. The conceptions themselves become energetic, autonomous, awareness units which originate and organize energy efficiently and become over unity. So we're back again to the concept of these autonomous gods, of who we are, what we are in terms of manifesting and creating into the material realm. So this is a core concept. It's not completely developed. It's not completely expanded. That that will be another section because what the book attempts to do is to build on concepts as we go through this.
And obviously we also have to define a lot of other aspects of this, including some of our more scientific processes behind this, our understanding of things like infinity, hypercubes, what is entropy, what is zero point, how do we take energy and attention and properly propel and expand them to get us to the place where we are basically autonomous gods operating in intelligence. That's an ambitious thing to break out, but ultimately what this is about is for us to begin to develop the awareness of who we are and unlimited capabilities while understanding that unlimited capabilities are operating within a realm which has defined limitations. So the defined limitations themselves largely have to do with the fact that we are expansive units and expansive units working in a limited media, but a, a media, a reality stream per se, that is very much expanding as we go through this creational process. So what I've done is basically walked you through a mind map of how I think as I'm going through the writing process. A lot of this is very complex when you, when you start to diagram it. The idea of diagramming it is both to break it down, get it into a format where you can understand it, and then simplify it and distill it. Because ultimately the point of eye of the needle is manifestation. The point of eye of the needle is to take us beyond the place where we currently are in this present system. And um, so that kind of wraps up this segment of it. This is really just kind of an exploratory first chapter podcast to introduce to you how I want to go through the creative process and how I want to engage the viewers and listeners. My, my goal, my objective is really very much to have an interactive aspect to the book. Um, most people who write books write books from their perspectives, their research, uh, frankly, their biases. I'm writing this book from a more expansive concept of having spent 10 years talking to some very diverse people, of interacting with hundreds, perhaps even thousands of beings, souls, humans in various venues, both on shows and online in various social media settings as well as even some personal interactions and it's important to me to have feedback to have the ability to kind of put some of these ideas out and have them mirrored back and so what i'm envisioning is very difficult sometimes to communicate in a real hard way if you've looked for instance at the patreon page and how i broke the levels out I wanted to keep this simple. I wanted to keep it expansive. I wanted people to be involved. I want you to be invested in it. Because this is sort of, this is sort of the test bed for this book to go out into the wild and begin to do what I hope it does, which is begin to seed awareness of higher consciousness and investment in, in building a momentum we have to get out of our mindset that we're limited. We have to get out of this continuous researching and continuous fact-based, linear-based, hard asset of just information. Information itself is only useful when it's applied. This is post-information. This is post-research. As I go through the book, there will be places where I may cite different sources and I will cite people that I respect and ideas that I think are tested and proven 
but more than anything else, conceptually, in terms of ideas, and in terms of the energy I want to invest in this, I want this to be a project that inspires, that inspires people to move beyond the present static reality of our existence. But that's what the eye of the needle is. And the graphic you see in front of you is interesting because actually this has now developed into being sort of the icon for eye of the needle. Um, I was doing some random sketching and artwork and a few days later I began to look at this, this what I thought at first was just a scribble and realize that this very much, in my mind, epitomizes the way I see the eye of the needle. Um, how the individuated consciousness is basically working its way into a matrix, the fabric, the needle piercing and penetrating this matrix, which is kind of the creational process that we're in, both moving in, through, and outward this etheric material that ultimately propels us into a place where we, be, we become these autonomous gods. So that's the concept, that's the visuals. If this is wordy, if it's confusing, feel free to communicate with me in the comments on this, send me emails. You can send me an email to um, uh, randy at offplanetradio.com. And you can also communicate in the comments on the posts. And we will do this as well when we meet face-to-face -face on Zoom in future group meetings coming up. So this is the first session of uh, basically going through the book authoring process and going through some notes. This is uh, pod number one, book authoring, Autonomous Gods, Eye of the Needle. I'm Randy Moggins. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Send me your thoughts. The truth is inside you.